This is Twit. So I'm reading this Chromium blog posting titled Faster and More Efficient Phishing Detection in M92, which is the just released version of Chrome. You know, because that sounds like a good thing. And depending upon what the posting's details revealed, I figured that it might be of interest to our listeners. Uh, you're hearing about it, of course, because it, that did turn out to be the case. Uh, though perhaps not for the reason you might imagine. Uh, the posting starts out with a little introductory marketing spiel. They said, Keeping Chrome users safe as they browse the web is crucially important to Chrome. In fact, security has always been one of our four corner principles. And then I, of course, was wondering what the other three were. But anyway, in some cases, security can come at the expense of performance. In this case, and of course, they named their series The Fast and the Curious. Uh, uh, oh, God. We, I know. <laughs> uh, we are excited to share how improvements to our phishing detection algorithms keeps users safe online. With these improvements, phishing detection is now 50, 50, and it turns out it's actually a a statistical spread, but we'll get there in a second. 50 times faster. It should say as much as 50 times faster and drains less battery. Then under the subheading of phishing detection, they write and they begin to explain this. That, and this is what I had to like do a double take. Every time you navigate to a new page, Chrome evaluates a collection of signals about the page to see if it matches those of phishing sites. Okay. To do that, we compare the color profile of the visited page. What? I know. That's the range and frequency of colors present on the page. That's ins- the col- What does that have to do with phishing? It, exactly. It's nuts. <laughs> Uh, with the color profiles of common pages, for example, in the image below, we can see that the colors are mostly orange, followed by green and then a touch of purple. Now, in the show notes, I have that captured. Of course, those listening cannot see the diagram, which I've included in the show notes, but it's a page with a bunch of orange pumpkins <laughs> so that orange dominates the page, uh, though they are all in light blue frames that actually has more surface area. For some reason in their example, they're ignoring the light blue. Okay, maybe they actually do ignore the background. I don't know. Actually, later later on, it looks like they don't. But uh, they also pick up on one of the frames, which has a green background. But in any event, th- this says that to detect phishing... They're looking at a page's color distribution. Hmm. So my first thought was, like yours, Leo, what? What? Why? Yeah. (laughs) They're they're compelling. They're they're (laughs) compelling. They're comparing the color profile of a page we visit to the color profiles of common pages. Really? Turns out, yes, they are. That's what Chrome does. Then it hit me. Whatever they do to pull off this detection needs to be done entirely on the client. Right. Right? You know, Chrome cannot be sending all visited page URLs back to the Google mothership. That would be a privacy catastrophe. Okay, now I will ignore for the time being that loading our web pages down full of image beacon pixels and JavaScript uh, you know, is essentially doing exactly that. But okay, Uh, not formally. And then they confirm the nature of the strategy by explaining, if the site matches a known phishing site, Chrome warns you to protect your personal information and present you from exposing your credentials. To preserve your privacy by default, Chrome's safe browsing mode never sends any images outside the browser. While this is great for privacy, it means that your machine has to do all the work to analyze the image. Okay, so then what follows, I've lightly edited to clarify what they're saying without the use of any graphics. So they essentially wrote, image processing can can generate heavy workloads because analyzing the image requires an elevation, I'm sorry, an evaluation of each pixel in what is commonly known as a pixel loop. 
some modern monitors display upwards of 14 million pixels. So even simple operations on each of those pixels can add up to a lot of CPU use. For phishing, phishing detection, the operation that takes place on each pixel is the counting of its basic colors. Wow. The ca the ca yeah. This was all news to me. Did they why explain I'm, I'm, why they're monitoring the colors? I'm sure there's some correlation, but I just, it's not obvious. So they say, yeah, kind of, the colors are stored in an associative data structure called a hash map. For each pixel, we extract its RGB color values and store the counts in one of three different hash maps. So I, I guess they break it down into RGB and then are they're, they're like storing a histogram of the individual intensities of each R, G, and B component. Yeah, they probably hash and, it for speed, right? And then hashing, right. And they said one for each color. Adding one item to a hash map is fast, but we have to do this for millions of pixels. We try to avoid avoid redu we try to avoid reducing the number of pixels to avoid compromising the quality of the analysis. However, the computation itself can be improved and in this just released 92 it has been. The code now avoids keeping track of RGB channels in three different hash maps and instead uses only one to index by color. Three times less counting, they said. And, and this I think is the big key, consecutive pixels are summed before being counted in the hash map. It's kind of like Huffman encoding. It's like Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. For a site with a uniform background color, that's the reason I said, well, they actually are paying attention to background colors. They said this can reduce the hash map overhead to almost nothing. With like in the same way as you said, Huffman could with compression a long run of something to down to you know something very short. With the new approach, there are significantly fewer operations on the hash map. As a result, starting with 92, Chrome now executes image-based phishing classification. Okay, so the big takeaway is that phishing is using image-based classification. Like, okay, who knew that? Uh, up to 50 times faster at the 50th percentile. Okay, so that means what? That half of the users get 50 times improvement. There are... Then on one side of that, the 50th percentile, they're getting even better improvement. And on the other side, they're getting less dramatic improvement. But they did say, and 2.5 times faster at the 99th percentile. So, you know, even, even 99 percent of all users will get up to at least two and a half times faster. On average, they said, users will get their phishing classification results after 100 milliseconds instead of 1.8 seconds. They said this benefits you in two ways as you use Chrome. First and foremost, using less CPU time to achieve the same work improves general performance. Less CPU time means less battery drain and less time with spinning fans. Second, getting the results faster means Chrome can warn you sooner. The optimization brought the percentage of requests that took more than five seconds to process from 16 and a quarter percent to less than 1.6 percent. So, so 16 and a half percent were take were actually requiring more than five and a half seconds to for Chrome to decide if this was a phishing page you were being shown. So the, this client side phishing detection is very time and ha has been very time and compute intensive. And they said, uh, and the speed improvement makes a real difference in security, especially when it comes to stopping you from entering your password in a phishing site. Yeah, five, five seconds. And so if you've got 
and any kind of automated username and password insertion going on, you can already have you may have already done that. It will have filled in the form and you've clicked log me in before five seconds have passed, and then it turns out to be a, a malignant, malicious site. So, yeah, you don't want to wait. I mean, you want to know a lot faster than that. They said, overall, these changes achieve a reduction of almost 1.2% of the total CPU time used by all Chrome renderer processes and utility processes at Chrome's scale, even minor Algorithm improvements can result in major energy efficiency gains in aggregate. Here's to many, many more centuries of CPU time saved. Stay tuned for many more performance improvements to come. So what they must have done is, you know, done some performance profiling of Chrome and and looked at like where all the time was going and a chunk of it was going to looking at every single page the user visits and you know is it valid and and so what they must also mean that this also means that in every end end users chrome repository on their local machine are a set of criteria that like Fishing sites they have seen and profiled. So they've done this, this wacky image distillation and re basically reduced the image to a hash. And they've stored all these hashes, Lord knows how many, on our hard drives. And, and when you go to a page, Chrome had performs this process and checks to see if there's a match with any known phishing images, and if so, warns you. It, and, it's, and, it's essentially fingerprinting the site, but it's yes. doing so by its use of color. And I think, I bet you where this came from is you have a, a similar problem if you're trying to detect porn. Uh, and so all of the companies, Facebook, Google, anybody who's got image storage, has an algorithm that seems, or especially not just porn in general, but but revenge porn, where they have hashes of known revenge porn images, and then they look for things, any future any, occurrence. If it matches, oh, we got another one, and they pull it down immediately. And yeah. I suspect, and they also, I think there were attempts to do this with with just too much flesh at one point, which, by the way, we're not very effective. But that's probably where the body of, of knowledge oh, so comes it, so from. So it used to be heuristic. Heuristic, So if yeah. it was a lot of flesh tones, A lot of flesh tones. Say, ah. That didn't work so well. I remember they stopped doing that. But I suspect that the research done is probably related to this. So wow. what's interesting is the choice and use of colors in a, in a site are unique enough that you can say yeah. it's a fingerprint, essentially. Yep. Yeah, and interesting. The, the other nice thing about this is when you think about it, because we're all twitchy now about fingerprinting, right? So this is something that absolutely destroys the image. Like you're not in any way storing a representation of an image that could be sensitive. You, you know, it's a hash of some deconstruction of the individual RGB values, which are counted in some fashion. And just, you know, yeah. so, I mean, it's really, it, it's, and the fact that they're using a hash means that it can't be reversed. Right. right? So it's, so that it's, was the and, image and, with revenge it, porn. You don't want to circulate those images. Right. That would be counterproductive. And, and as we know, anytime you pump something through a hash, that's an information lossy process, On in this case, on purpose. So they've come up with something which is certainly not inexpensive to do. And it's like, wow, I I didn't realize that was happening in the background. But, you know, and I've, I've had that big, you know, I'm sure we've all, Chrome users, you, the whole screen goes red. And oh, yeah. it's like, you know, warning Will Robinson. It's like, whoa, yeah, what yeah. happened? You know, you, you know, there it is. Yep, there's a perfect example of it you, yeah. that you just Deceptive brought Deceptive so. sight ahead. All right. I, I just think it's, uh, this is a very kind of computer science-y solution. Because the problem is, well, how do you, okay, we've, we've got known phishing sites, how do you fingerprint those and identify them in a speedy way in future? Yep. And yep. I, I love it that they said, you know, if we just look at the colors, that's enough. Yeah. I think that's great. <laughs> and we can hash so, those very quickly. 
And so the the takeaway is do, probably do not put too many pictures of pumpkins. On, on your, <laughs> Stay away from the pumpkins. Your, you know, that might cause a false positive. You know, because pumpkins could be misconstrued. Well, you never know. Anyway, you I, never yeah. know. Well, 